Hey guys, so I've been thinking a lot about like my musical journey so far over the last five years or so, um, and also a lot about advice that people give to beginners, and I'm the same. I always say, practice a lot, make a lot of music, and you'll improve. But we never really explain why, why it is that you actually improve, and like what's the difference between you know, somebody who's been producing for three weeks and somebody that's been producing for 10 years and somebody that's, um, you know, got a musical background and someone that doesn't. Um, and I think the main difference is that, like, let's say, for example, you're learning to play the piano and you practice the piano every day. What happens? First of all, you start developing your fingers, develop like a muscle memory. And I guess you could kind of compare that to your workflow in your door. Like it just becomes second nature. You know, you know which buttons to click to achieve a certain result. You develop like a workflow, really. Um, and a workflow certainly helps you improve. It helps you write faster, but that doesn't, that's not what makes you write good music. What makes you write good music is the development of your ear. So what you need to really do is write a lot of music so that you develop your ear. That should be the main goal. The main goal shouldn't be, oh, I need plugins, I need to like learn this door inside out. The main goal should be writing a lot of music so you can develop your ear. And now I just want to go a little bit further and explain the difference between somebody who's been producing for one year and somebody who's been producing for five years, or even someone who's been producing for one week. And um, I know this from experience because this is what happened to me over five years. And the main thing I would say is that when you first open up your door and uh, you, you're writing your first song, you open up your piano roll and you have like an average patch, whatever, I've just got like a sine wave over here with some reverb on it. And especially if you don't have a musical background, you will put down a note and you'll put down a few in key, maybe like ACE, that's a you have an A minor chord. You put down this these three notes and you play them you're like, hey, that actually sounds like music. That that's like I'm surprised that that came from me. And you become immediately satisfied by this little melody over here. And you're like, okay, cool. I'm gonna turn this into a track. So you write your first track, and then your track just consists of this melody repeated throughout the entire thing. And you're satisfied by that because your your brain is like, you're you're in shock that you've made something that sounds like actual music and then you show it to somebody else and they're like yeah it's nice and they're kind of lying to you and maybe you just try and send it off to a record label and you get no response um and then you know you give up and you're sad about it because you can't understand why you like the music that you made but nobody else does and then what happens is if you keep on repeating this process over and over again you'll put down notes on your piano roll and that satisfaction each time you do it becomes less and less. It becomes harder and harder to satisfy yourself. So like, you'll write this ACE melody and you like, you play it and you're like, oh, that's nice. And then you're like, okay, but I'm kind of getting bored of it. Let me add in another note over here. And then you're like, oh my God, that's really nice. So now I've got like a little variation and you get satisfied. And this process keeps on happening until eventually you start writing music that's actually getting closer to what a professional song might sound like. Okay, so now that we understand that, this is the reason you need to be finishing full tracks, as in not just making, you know, 116 bar loops throughout the year, but rather making, you know, 50 finished tracks that have been composed, mixed and mastered by yourself because this uh, satisfaction loop that you, you, know, you need to strengthen, essentially, needs to happen with every aspect of producing in order for you to get a professional track. So you need to practice composing, so writing your melodies and, and chords, that you need to get to a point where it becomes really difficult for you to be satisfied by them, for your ear to go, you know, this, this is a good melody versus you know, a beginner who just thinks anything is a good melody, as long as it sounds like it's in key. Um, and then the next step would be arranging. So like your arrangements need to go
go through that same satisfaction loop strengthening process. Same thing with your mixing. You know, when you first start mixing your tracks, um, you know, you maybe your tracks start sounding like it's full, and to you that's a good mix. But to somebody who's been producing for ten years and mixing, and who's actually good at it, they'll listen to your mix and go, you know, it sounds okay, but it's not good. You know, maybe you haven't panned enough, or you haven't done got enough details, or maybe you know your kick bass relationship could be a bit stronger. Um, and the same thing happens with mastering. So if you're finishing full tracks, then you get to essentially strengthen each of those skills at the same time. Every time you finish a track, you 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 strengthen each one of those skills and you become less satisfied with each aspect of music production. So the more music you write, the less satisfied you will get with your music and that will force better music out of you. Cool. So yeah, that's all I wanted to kind of share and just make you guys understand that that's what you need to do to improve. You need to write a lot of music and yeah, that's it.